Hello everyone, welcome to Reach Goals. Today I am going to talk about how you can explain the REST API in layman's terms and we will also talk about how the REST API works and finally we will talk about some of the interesting interview questions. Let's say you have a phone and you want to order a pizza. So what you do here is you call the pizza hut and you try to establish a communication with them, right? So now you will start to order, in that you will ask some questions like what is a popular pizza and take this order add extra cheese and sometimes you may be also asking to cancel one of the item right so here a person is talking to another person and the language which you are using is in english so the communication is easy and you can establish whatever you want over here so that is how it works when a person is talking to a different person let's take another case where you have an app installed in your smartphone and the app has to establish a communication with the server right now in the server has to ask different questions like what is a popular pizza, take this extra order or add extra cheese or cancel one of the item. You need a common language which can communicate between the app as well as on the server. Here the machine A is talking to the machine B and the connection is between two different machines. right? So in this case the REST API concept is applied and that's where the HTTP protocol comes into the picture. right? So let's see how it works. So let's take a case like what's the popular pizza in the HTTP protocol we have a method which is get and which is similar to asking a question like what is a popular pizza. Similarly if you want to ask something like you know take this order there is a corresponding method which is post. Likewise we have different methods like put as well as the method delete which is equivalent to the cancel. So these are all well defined in the HTTP protocol and that's why the rest API comes into the picture right. So this is how you explain the REST API in layman's terms. And if you have a better option of explaining that, please put that in the comment and that will be helpful for others. Here, let's see how the RESTful API fits into the entire system design or into the architecture, right? So if you look into this diagram, uh, this is something which I used in Airbnb system design in one of my earlier presentations as well. So you can see the URL of the system design in the description section as well. So if you look into this, you have a client Client is connecting to the CDN and in turn connects to the load balancer and finally it is connecting to the RESTful web services which are deployed into the Docker container and it hosted in the EC2 environment, right? So now all the communication between the client and server is happening through the RESTful web services. So some of the RESTful web services are uh, guest account service, view room service, search service and payment service etc. So you can see the detail about the RESTful service in the other video which I talked about earlier. So here are some of the key points to remember when you talk about RESTful API. So what RESTful API means is it is a representational state transfer protocol and basically they are set up the rules followed by the developers when they are creating an application, right? So what API means is it's an application programming interface and it is like one piece of software has to connect to the or talk to the other piece of software. So that is where API comes into the picture. So the another interesting thing about the RESTful API is it can be used by any programming languages and it follows HTTP standard. That means you have a lot of tools and programming languages which are supporting the RESTful API and you can utilize those libraries to connect between the different applications or completely make use of the RESTful APIs. And you would have heard about a lot of things like Facebook API, Twitter API or Amazon API. That means they are talking about the RESTful API, right? That is by default you can understand they are talking about the RESTful APIs. When a client requests an API, it usually responds us with the data which is called a response payload and will also sometimes get a HTTP error code. So based on the error code, you can show the error message to the UI or you can redirect to the some other pages based on your use cases, right? This is a structure of RESTful API and I've used curl command to execute it. And this is an example from GitHub. So if you look into this, I have shown like, you know, curl dash H and you have content type semicolon application slash JSON and you have the API path, right? So each one represents a different meaning and let's see one by one. So the blue color is called as an endpoint and the red one is called the headers and the green color is the body. And we also have methods like, you know, get, post, put and delete, which are most popular and that can be used in the API as well. Now, if you call the API, you will be getting a response, right? So that is something like what you see at the bottom, right? So it will have a key value pair and it can be used to parse that and you can display certain information in the UI based on your use case. There are plenty of tools in the market to access the RESTful API. So the tool which I'm showing here is a tool called Postman and it can be used to access the RESTful API. So if you look into the screen, you have a location to place your URL, which is an endpoint, and you have, you have locations to place the methods like get, and you can also have the key value pairs, 
and once you put all this information and press the send button it will go and hit the api and will get a response right so that is how you see in the screen now if you want to alter the api with a different id or different parameters you can change the url parameters and do a submit again to get the response as you saw on the screen let's talk about some of the interesting interview questions related to the restful api and try to answer one by one the first question is if you have to develop web service which one you will choose the soap or restful and why if you want to answer this question you have to clearly understand the difference between the rest and soap and based on the difference you can understand the pros and cons and from that you can choose one among them right in case of a rest you can use variety of data formats for example you can use json as well as xml and rest is a low bandwidth protocol that means the latency is low the performance is high the rest is basically developed with the help of http protocol and since we are all familiar with using the websites understanding the http protocol is much easier and you can easily develop any application based on the http protocol if you look into the soap the interesting part is it has something called ws security and ws security is available only for soap and if you want to secure your application based on ws security you have to go for soap there is something called built in retry logic in case of a soap for example if you take the rest what happens is if you connect to the api if there is some issue you have to reconnect from the client to the server or to the restful web services whereas in case of soap there is a built in retry logic and you can efficiently use that to make sure you retry and get the results out of that in case of soap you cannot efficiently utilize the cache mechanism whereas in case of rest you can have the cache mechanism it's like if you if you connect to the restful rep services if there is a response you can cache the response in the redis cache and make use of it whereas in case of a soap you cannot do that there is something called built in asset properties within the soap whereas you don't have that in the rest soap is a functional driven that means if you look into the wsdl file or wsdl file you will see all the methods exposed into that and you will also see what are the parameters passed into this methods right so this is very helpful when you are developing an automation application so you can expose the wsdl file to the client and the client can read that and it can understand what method it has to call and what parameter it has to be passed and based on that it can it automatically execute that so this is one of the very interesting feature which is available in the soap and it is not there in the rest so now once you know the difference based on the use cases whatever you have been using you can clearly articulate which web service you have to use for which instance or which use cases so that is how you have to answer a question like you know which which web service has to be used whether it is a soap or a restful web service so the next question is describe three recent apis you have designed or worked with so this is a very interesting interview question and the interviewer will ask you to understand whether you have really worked with the restful api or you are giving a theoretical answer so what i suggest is if you have not worked on the restful api i would suggest you to go into your application and see if there are any restful apis used and try to give an answer based on that rather than giving a theoretical answers right the next question is how do you address throttling to ensure a restful api performs well and the spikes in the calls this question is similar to the previous question and the interviewer wants to understand whether you have really worked on the restful api and you utilize throttling the reason i'm saying is most of the restful apis will be having a throttling so if you have really worked on the restful api you should know what throttling is so if you know the different types of throttling and how it can be utilized you will be able to explain the answer very clearly so let's understand what are the different types of throttling and why throttling is used the first one is a rate limiting so what it does is it enables a request to pass through it until a limit is reached within a certain interval of time the next one is ip level throttling what it does is there will be a whitelisting of certain ips only those ips will be allowed to access the restful apis the third one is concurrent connection limit basically what it does is you will be having lot of clients or lot of users connecting to different restful apis concurrently now if you know the users you can limit the number of concurrent connection for specific users if you are able to limit the connections what happens over here is your restful web services will be saved and you can avoid the spikes the fourth one is resource level throttling in this case what happens is you have a client client will be connecting the restful web service restful web services it might be connecting to the database it might be using a query which fetches the larger result sets so when the result sets are larger there is a high possibility 
the CPU would be spiking. Now, based on the user, based on their ability, what you can do is you can limit those users with the help of a resource throttling at the back end. So that is how the resource throttling works. Now, if you want to answer this interview question, you should understand all the mechanism of throttling and you would have really utilized one of the throttling in your application. Once you understand all this throttling mechanism, it will be easy for you to implement one of them and that will help you to answer this question seamlessly. The next interview question I have is how to secure a RESTful API. This is one of the popular and most frequently asked interview question and if you want to answer this question, you have to understand the different security measures followed in the RESTful APIs. Let's see one by one. The first one is the HTTPS. So if you are building a RESTful API, make sure you are running under the HTTPS protocol, not with the HTTP protocol. So the next important security measure you have to take is hashing. Let's say if you are building a RESTful web service and if there are some of the important properties, you have to make sure those things are hashed. If you are exposing the important properties to the third party, they can utilize that and they can hack your RESTful web services. The third important security measure you have to take when building a RESTful web service is you should never expose any important properties or parameters in the URL. For example, if you expose username or email in the parameter, it will be very easy for user to hack those informations and you can they can completely spoil your RESTful API. And also finally, you can use OAuth to protect your RESTful web services. And if you know different mechanisms, you can easily answer the interview question like you know how to secure a RESTful API. If you want to play around with some of the public RESTful APIs, you can use this dashboard. You have APIs from Spotify, you have APIs from Facebook and many more applications. You can connect with them through the Postman and you can see how it works and you can play around with that to understand and get more knowledge about the RESTful API. That's it I have for the session. Thanks for watching.